Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. And today's episode is gonna be based off of something that's quite current. It's very rare that I talk about current things, but this one I felt like I really needed to. So that's the kind of Doja Cat is over party and um, canceling her. And that's something that's kind of just happened this past weekend. Um, and she's issued an apology. So in terms of Doja Cat, I didn't really um, know about her until probably like the past year, year and a half. She's got a very catchy song that's out at the moment, Say So. And um, also she, uh, I think it, it managed to go to number one. So she had like Nicki Minaj up on there and everything. So she seems to be doing like really, really well. And then over the weekend, there's all sorts of things that kind of blew up about her. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But just to kind of give you a bit of a background in terms of who Doja is, if you have no idea who she is, she is an American singer slash rapper. Um, and she's of mixed race descent. So her dad is a famous South African entertainer and he, um, he's in one of my favorite movies ever, which is Serafina. So if you haven't watched that, that's a cult classic. You definitely need to go and watch that. But, um, yeah. And then her mum, I believe is Jewish, I think. So, um, she, over the weekend was exposed because people, people love to do this. Like, um kind of go back and dig up old things about yourselves but I think with her there were things that were like recent like as in within the past week so it wasn't it wasn't necessarily digging up things from like five ten years ago it was more so kind of okay this you've you've participated in some racist things recently so I think the thing that kind of kicked it all off was a video of her in this zoom call I think with a quote-unquote alt-right group I don't know what that means I'm guessing it's people who I don't know I feel like people that think that I don't know like they wouldn't get vaccines and they think technology is out to get us and um obviously they I'm pretty sure they would have racist views as well and all sorts of things I don't know somebody like Hitler I just that's what I think when I think alt-right so she was apparently in this group um I don't know what was said in this group but apparently they were kind of saying racist things as well um and she was a a participant of this group and then going back to kind of five years ago she said some homophobic things when she was still in um school and um she had a song called didn't do nothing I don't know what didn't do means um but apparently it's a again a racist term that refers to a person who um, is obviously black and it gets pulled over by the police and kind of argues the reason why they've been pulled over. And, you know, like, well, you're pulling me over for no reason because I didn't do anything. So instead of didn't do, didn't do nothing. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit of context about her. So Doja is over party is something that is everywhere at the moment. And... um yeah she's apparently been cancelled for her racist insinuations um because again the dindu song is referring to um somebody of black descent being pulled over and it's almost like a mockery people are relating it back to sandra bland sandra bland is somebody who died back in 2015 um again as as a result of police brutality so it's a sore topic for so many people and I think that um cancelling people is something that has become the new norm as soon as someone says or does something that you don't agree with we cancel them straight away now I'm not here to tell people how they should or they shouldn't do things I'm just going to talk about how I do things personally and how it relates to us as a culture and particularly black people so you know just going back to Doja she obviously is of a mixed race descent and um I believe that her father well not even that I believe it's evident that her father wasn't present in her life so her dad left and went back to South Africa and she wasn't really familiar with him. And then um, she she probably had to also grow up with the white side of her family. And I know the, what is a common experience for many mixed race people is to unfortunately um, deal with racism from your white members of the family. 
which is really sad. And then if you don't have your black side of the family to kind of like balance things out, then I could see how you would have a lot of self-hatred. So for me, whenever I see someone post racist tweets within our culture, not outside, I'm not talking about a white person or Hispanic person or anything coming at black people. But when I see people of black or mixed race descent, when they have black ancestry, saying racist things about us, I no longer get angry. Because I don't see the point. If anything, I feel sorry for these people. Because whenever you say something racist to black people, you are also saying something racist to yourself. So for you to sit there and say negative things about yourself, you clearly feel like you lack self-worth. You clearly um, don't look at yourself and think that you're beautiful. You clearly don't look at yourself and think that you are on par with other people in this society, hence why you feel this way. And there's lots of things that perpetuate the way in which people think and feel. But I feel, I think that we shouldn't cancel these people. I feel like we should hold people to a certain standard. So on Twitter, I'm sure there's other platforms where she's being dragged, but Twitter tends to be the worst. And you know, people will say all sorts of things. People won't communicate with her what they actually want as a resolve. They they will just let out their anger. And I'm not saying that what there should be is a Zoom call with every single black person that's been offended by what race, uh, by the racist comments that she has said, um, because Zoom would crash. But um, I feel like when you're tweeting her, if that's what you feel like you want to do, communicate with her what you want to come of this, as opposed to just calling her and do you know what makes me laugh the most is okay you'll be calling her out for racism but then you will call her a racist term yourself does that make you any better i feel like in recent weeks that's been something that we've seen so similarly similar thing happened to um a uk influencer called nella rose so you got dragged over to Twitter because of some things that she said like 10 years ago um and it's it's just been a non-stop thing she lost her dad people were still getting onto her she she put out a video talking about how she had a car crash people are still saying negative things it's like give people a break well give nella a break but in terms of doja um like i said cancelling her is the easy way out you know saying you know what if someone has done you dirty you just simply say to them um i'm not going to talk to you anymore in fact you don't even say to them i'm not going to talk to you anymore you just delete their number cut them out whatever you keep it moving that's the easy way out but actually having a conversation with that person to explain to them now what you've done is is wrong this is how we move forward is much more productive for the culture because i feel like once people know that the listeners and the fans and the black community as a whole we are going to hold you accountable to the things that you say and you do, people as a whole will move better. And it doesn't take just one artist, it's just gonna take doing the same thing over and over again with multiple people, but just canceling somebody isn't enough. And even if you cancel her, I'm sorry to say, it's not gonna be enough because um, she has a a massive white fan base. Say so is, you know, if, if, Even despite all of this, she could still be on track to have like one of the best songs of 2020 because she has such a wide audience, you know? That song is a commercial hit. It isn't just for the quote unquote black community. So canceling her at the end of the day, will it affect her pocket? Maybe a little bit, but she'll be able to bounce back. She has um, her alt-right people who clearly love her as well. So I think it's important to, for us as black people to, like I said, hold people to a certain standard and say, what you've done is wrong. What you've said is disgusting. I'm offended by what you've said, but what I'm not going to do is cancel you. Instead, what I'm going to do is um, tell you what you need to do moving forward. So moving forward, I want to see you you know, being a bit more active in the community, talking about the problems that are affecting us, using your influence to help us get places and things like that. That's what I feel like we need to do instead of just cancelling people because that's the easy, that's the easiest thing to do. Oh, so what are we going to do? Literally cancel everybody. And also we need to remember that it's a double standard. So if it was a man who was attractive, mixed race like Doja, and he said some racist things, I bet that there wouldn't be as much commotion, but it's because she's a woman, that's why, because there's been some foul things said and done by our own black artists that have been, that are male, that have been allowed to slide. 
So yeah, it's holding everyone to the same standard, man, woman, light skin, dark skin. I, I hate that debate, but it's something that is very much evident still um, and letting them know we, we're only going to support you if you do right by us. If you don't do right by us, then we're not gonna support you. And calling people out of their names, cussing them, leaving nasty comments, that's not gonna make that person change. If anything, for somebody like her, you leaving nasty comments and calling her derogatory things and saying racist things back to her fuels the original thought that she had that has probably led her to the place that she's in already. So if anything, I'm not saying, like, be be a bit more kind and be a bit more understanding to people. And there are so many people that have Doja's way of thinking that we know, like in our family, like this anti-black is something that's perpetuated all over the place. Are you holding your mum or your dad or your cousins or your grandma, granddad, um, friends to the same standard that you want to hold this woman to? Probably not. So I think that if you have this energy for one person, you need to have it for everybody. Because I've also seen, like I said, people pick and choose the people that they want to come after when it comes to saying anti-black things. So please love on yourselves. We are all one people. And if you don't police your own, what happens is you get people outside of the culture policing it for you. So that's why, you know, once she issued her apology, which is another thing I'm going to talk about, um you had people outside of the culture saying, okay, yep, we accept your apology. So, I'm sorry, the apology was not for you, okay? It was meant to be for us, you know, people that look like us um, and who were offended by the tweet because the tweets or the songs and whatever, because we're the ones that live this this reality every single day. So um, going back to her apology, and I know a lot of of people, artists influencers celebrities you know people in the public eye whenever something goes wrong they issue an apology if they've issued an apology you just have to accept it if you don't believe it's genuine that's up to you what do you want them to go and issue another apology that's not how it works that's why even given an apology sometimes i'm like i don't even know why these people bother i think i would more so if i was in that position and i had to issue an apology i would say i'm sorry for embarrassing you guys and letting you guys down but equally that go they, that then opens up another conversation as to why do we hold these people to such a high standard in the first place you have to remember that these people are um fallible you know, they will fall short. They are human beings. The same problems we go through, they go through as well. So stand culture is something that has to be looked at and cancel culture is something that also has to be look at, looked at. And it's going to start by you having those difficult conversations with people that you know in regards to their anti-blackness. And then from there, when we kind of have it embedded in our culture and it's things that we say to our our kids or the younger generation or and challenge that older generation and their anti-blackness as well, because that's also important and pe- people that are our peers, that we can really start to see a change in our culture and therefore that will also be perpetuated on screen and in our artists and they will just have a love as a whole for being black it is a beautiful thing to be black so yeah guys that is my take on um cancelling doja cat i won't be cancelling her um but instead using this time to kind of um make sure that i'm continuing to have the anti-black conversations with people that need to hear this rhetoric and remember that they are black and that they need to love their blackness and it's something that will not go away and yeah guys i hope that you guys are keeping safe during this time you and your families if you haven't already please subscribe like and share as well take care until next time